Yeah, so just trying to make a sequel to my um, climate change video. Um, just haven't been sure what to, more to say. Like, I think I covered most things. Like, we've got the, um, you know, basically the, the greenhouse effect is real. Uh, there's an abundance of, of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Uh, not just CO2, but methane, other ones like uh, nitrous oxide and also water vapour, which is a, has the most abundance. I could have maybe talked about sea level rise, but that's not, not the most urgent problem. As uh, Guy McPherson and others suggest, the most important, well, the biggest problem is food, uh, the collapse of food which ended the civilizations of, of other, ended other civilizations like the Babylonians, the Mayans, the Egyptians, and so on, the, you know, the Greeks. Okay, so, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of people think, are thinking in the abrupt climate change community that by the early 2020s, uh, the shit will hit the fan. Um, you know, we're looking at a blue ocean event, um, you know, very soon, maybe not this year, but we know it's coming. I mean, c a couple of years ago, when I looked at the, at the downward trend of, of the sea ice, I thought to myself that, look, by 2000, 2020, the ice will be gone. Um, and last summer, we saw a very slow, um, <clears throat> regrowth of the, of the ice after the last year's melt season, 2018. And yeah, past past few months we've had the, you know the Cali California bushfires. Uh, we've had severe drought in Australia. A lot of bushfires, a lot of floods, very serious flooding in Townsville. Uh, I believe it was around 2,000 homes um, completely um, damaged beyond repair. Um, yeah, there's more and more talk about geoengineering. Um, one of the key problems with, with geoengineering is that it doesn't solve the wider ecological problem, as Guy McPherson talks about, the, the sixth mass extinction that's already underway. Um, yeah, the life of the planet isn't solved by geoengineering, uh, which is you know, blocking out the sky with chemicals, uh, one that I've recently uh, read about is the, the cloud brightening with salt water. Um, yeah, well, one key problem is that is it doesn't solve the, the the problem of high acid in the ocean. Okay, it might cool the cool the planet down, um, reduce the temperature, but doesn't solve the problem of um, you know too many people, too much. Too much plastic, too much heavy metals everywhere, too much benzene, and, and so on. Um, yeah, we're we're wiping out uh, the insects, and remember, it's not it's not just the bees that pollinate the flowers; it's uh, it's the birds. Yes, yeah, so the mammals, the birds, the reptiles are all dying off, um, and but insects have, have been quite striking. Um, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence and proper evidence of, of uh, mass die-offs of, of, in terms of volume of insects. There's anec anecdotal evidence of people driving across Canada and hardly a, hardly a bug hits their windscreen. Much the same in Australia. Um, yeah, so that's like the, the first sign of, of ecological collapse is, is um, you know, less insects. So yeah, in, t in 2019, uh, we've still got a situation where uh, there's plenty of denial. Um, there's sort of not an urgency with, with making these videos, I think, because I mean, what what, are, what am I really achieving by by telling people that they're, um, they're going to die? I, I mean, <clears throat> there is some benefit, but it's it's not a lot. It's just Look, if your doc, a doctor said to you, look, you've got two years left, um, the only benefit is that you can, you can check off your bucket list um, a lot better.
if you know you've only got two years left. Instead of just spending all your time at the office, uh, making money, spend more time with your family, um, you know, go, go overseas, have a trip to Paris, whatever you want to do, do, do things that have some meaning to you, complete your relationships, that sort of thing. Um, so, and it's a, it's, there's a paradox. Um, like, Guy, Guy McPherson's paradox is if we shut down every coal fired power station, um, that'll actually reduce uh, global dimming and the, and the planet will heat up even faster. So, if we go around telling people that climate change is really serious, really abrupt, um, like these people that are members of the Extinction Rebellion, particularly in, in England, they're trying to um, shake the government into action. But what, what are they going to do? Um, what's the, what can the government do? Shut, if they shut down the power plants, they shut down transport, uh, make everybody go vegan. Um, well, it's not going. It's not going to achieve much or anything really, because of the global dimming, and because the the wheels have already been set in motion. There's a lot of inertia. You know, we we um, we've as uh, scientists are saying more and more, we need to get the CO two out of the atmosphere, not re just reduce our emissions. We actually need to. Um, to, to get into geoengineering, right? Um, with, with the amount of CO two, it's already in, in the atmosphere. Um, we're looking at um, continued warming, multiple degrees by say two thousand twenty-five, as I said in the first video. Um, yeah, and methane is is much higher as well compared with seventeen fifty. Um, and there's vast, vast areas of, of um, in Russia of, of uh, the methane coming out of the, the permafrost. So there's all this um, methane in the Arctic Ocean on the on the sea floor, but also around the Arctic Ocean in the permafrost. And we're also seeing a lot of rain. Um, if you know, I used to do a lot of snow skiing when I was younger, and and once the season ends and it starts to rain, that's when the snow really starts to thaw. So it's just, you know, I don't know how many hectare, acres, hectares, how many millions of hectares of of of, of this um, melting, thawing permafrost has all this methane bubbling up. So it's, we've already seen it coming out of the um, the ocean floor, Arctic Ocean floor, and particularly the Siberian continental shelf, where it's nice and shallow. That gives it gives a chance for the the methane bubbles to actually reach the surface. Because it if, if if methane bubbles come out really deep in the ocean, it it can dissolve into the water. So the bubbles stay intact in shallow water all the way up to the surface and, and reach the atmosphere. So if, if you know that all this methane's in the air, you know that methane is an incredibly potent greenhouse gas, which has a short and sharp action compared to CO2. It stays in the atmosphere um, only a few decades, whereas CO2 is more like two centuries, um, but it's, it's much more potent. So it depends how, how you measure it and compared with CO2. Into, like, as I said, methane is short and sharp, so it can raise the world's temperatures within, in a matter of months, whereas, whereas CO2 takes like 10 years or more to actually heat the ocean. Yeah, last video I talked about um, the share market collapse. Yeah, what I'm trying to say there was that it's tied in with with climate change because the the finance the financial system will collapse 
before the shit really hits the fan with the climate because one of these days people are going to realise that we don't have a future so they're going to take all their money out of the share market so that you know, private enterprise is to be, will be dead um, which, which also relates to uh, the our loss of food um, <clears throat> okay so it's yeah it's all a lot of fun isn't it but um, it's, yeah, it's fun to make YouTube videos and um, please comment below um, thanks very much Ta